Hello everybody, my name is Zonzi and I'm the host of the Showcase AMA series here on the Polygon Discord. Thanks so much for joining in today. Today we got a special guest. We have Yanni from Armadillo. How are you doing today, Yanni? Hi guys, hi everyone. Uh, great to be here. Very excited to talk about Armadillo. Yeah, it's great to have you here. I'm really excited to hear all about it. Um, so we always like to kick these off doing some introductions. So why don't you uh, tell us a bit about your backstory, what got you into crypto, what you've been doing since you got involved in the space, and like ultimately, you know, what got you involved with Armadillo? Yeah, sure. So I've been in crypto for the last uh, five years, since 2017. And beforehand, I was building a fintech application since 2009. I spent several years in uh, TradeFi, in uh, risk management of a bank, and uh, had a startup of my own in the field of uh, algorithmic trading. And uh, in the last uh, two years, my main focus has been on uh, DeFi. Um, basically, it's a combination of my two passions of uh, crypto and, and finance. Um, I'm part of the Coty Group, which is an L1 for payments. So. Two years ago, uh, before uh, before the original DeFi summer, we were looking at uh, what's happening in DeFi and thought it's unbelievable. And we wanted to build something very useful for DeFi. And uh, what we've done is that we've built a, a VIX for crypto. Uh, it's called CVI. So the VIX is a very famous uh, indicator of the stock market. It has a, a huge, a massive ecosystem in uh, TradeFi. So we, what we did, we collaborated with uh, Professor Dan Galai, which is the creator of the original VIX, and we built uh, the CVI, which is a VIX for crypto. Now, what we, what we found out that uh, the VIX, the CVI, is, it can be used as a perfect hedge for solving impermanent loss. And permanent loss is one of the biggest, uh, most important problems in DeFi that is yet unsolved. And uh, it also makes sense because the VIX of uh, traditional finance is widely used by institutional players as a hedging tool. So this brought on the creation of Armadillo. Armadillo is the, the first product launched on top of the, the CVI ecosystem. And uh, the mission of the protocol is to protect users from this uh, very severe problem of impermanent loss. Okay, that's really interesting. So, um, would you mind like breaking down a bit more what Cody is and um, the what do you call it? The sorry, uh, CVI. The CVI, yes. Yeah. So, so Cody is uh, an L one for payments, and it's you can think about uh, CVI. The, it's the crypto volatility volatility index as uh, basically a child project of Cody. And the focus of uh, all of uh, our team is on uh, DeFi. Uh, so in terms of DeFi, it's also like to make sense of it, uh, there's like the protocol of uh, UMA, which is an, an oracle. So what we're building with CVI is basically an ecosystem of very different and uh, uh, products all used for hedging against volatility. And uh, Armadillo is also, uh, related to that. So impermanent loss is a problem that occurs whenever there is volatility. And uh, uh, just to explain a bit about crypto volatility index about uh, CVI, what it does, it measures the, the volatility in the crypto market. Um, so whenever there, is, uh, there are expectations of future volatility, the index goes up. It basically encompasses, it's basically a fear index for the crypto market. All right, so that makes a lot of sense then, like why you guys would um, use your knowledge of like the the VIX, the volatility index, to go ahead and uh, make something like Armadillo. So, um, so yeah, that clearly like explains what inspired Arm Armadillo. Uh, where are you guys currently at? Like, what stage are you at in your development journey? Um, and 
you know, what is our armadillo? Like, do you want to break that down a bit more? Uh, yeah, sure. So actually, we're, uh, it's a very exciting uh, step. We just uh, launched the protocol uh, last week. So it's been in beta since, I think, uh, early June. Uh, the beta was initially uh, only in, uh, open for community members of the CVI. So the CVI has a governance token called the Govi. So Govi community, community members were uh, better testing the beta launch of Armadillo. And uh, we launched it uh, last week. Now it's uh, it's live on the on the Polygon network. Fantastic! And why did you guys choose to go with the Polygon network? So the CVI is uh, the CVI has is both an index and a trading platform that allows you to trade it. So you can take positions on the CVI. Uh, besides being an index that you can uh, track and follow and use as a barometer of what's happening in crypto, you can also trade it. And like it's important to understand the context that the VIX is an index of TradeFi and it has a massive, massive ecosystem around it. So it has options, it has uh, futures, uh, it has ETF to track it. Uh, just to to have to give some feeling about it, the, the ETF, the tracked ETF that tracked the VIX have a volume of over $2 billion daily. They are widely used by uh, traders, by institutional players. And with this context, this is what we've bring to, brought to, uh, to crypto with the CVI that is now with Armadillo, it's expanding to an ecosystem of volatility product. The first of which is Armadillo, which is a, an independent uh, project. So uh, now that the project is live, uh, we, we started with protecting a limited number of pairs. And in the recent days, we've been adding new pairs. So uh, I believe the Matic East pair was just uh, added to the platform. So it's possible to protect impermanent losses uh, on this pair. And uh, also to mention about uh, Polygon also, uh, the CVI is live there since the very beginning. Uh, basically when uh, DeFi on Polygon was just beginning to gain traction and obviously our users love it, it uh, works very well and the, the gas fees are very low so it makes a lot of sense, it saves users a lot of uh, uh, fees and gas. Yeah for sure, so how does Armadillo work to protect uh, users from impermanent loss? Uh, yeah so maybe I I can just uh, show you how it works, right? Yeah, that'd show be great. Your... Yeah. So let me share the screen. Hey, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. And can you make it now? The screen looks good. Great. So I had uh, to uh, just uh, restart Discord for it to work. And, okay, so what you see here, this is the Armadillo platform. It is live on Polygon. So this is the website. Uh, when you connect, uh, very, there's a very simple explanation. The way it works is you can choose a pair that you want to protect, the amount you wish to protect, the period, and take the protection. So, second, seems like it's closed. Okay, uh, so let's close this. Uh, you see my screen, right? The Modelo site. Yeah, it looks great. And I gotta say, I'm a big fan of the branding. Yeah, I love it. So uh, actually, I really love the, the icon that uh, our VP Marketing created. It's, uh, 
very nice uh, armadillo, like uh, like a shield. Yeah, it's very yeah. on point. It's uh, definitely the correct animal to choose. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so just to explain what we're looking at, basically uh, to the right you see the CVI. Now Ar Armadillo uses uh, the CVI uh, for two things. One is to price the implement loss premiums that users uh, pay, and it also also uh, uses it for hedging the other side that sells the protection. So what we see here is the pairs that are currently supported, and as I mentioned, more and more pairs are being added, uh, two of which was or just added in the last week. Uh, one nice thing you can see, uh, so if we're looking at the pairs, you see that uh, there is a segment of your liquidity. So what I've done uh, right before the, uh, the AMA is I went to QuickSwap on Polygon and I provided liquidity to the pair of Matic ETH. So what you will see here that our platform Armadillo uh, automatically detected it. So it, uh, when you connect with your wallet, we automatically show you uh, any liquidity that you have on any DEX, on, even on different networks. So uh, for example, of the Maticis, what I can do in this case, I can just click buy protection, select uh, the period that I want to take the protection for, and uh, buy, just buy the premium. So I think uh, you can see here that it will cost me 0.69% uh, also, 0.7, right? From the amount of my liquidity. Now, this is uh, uh, some of the things that we have successfully, I think, I believe done here are a bit counterintuitive to how DeFi has worked in the past and how uh, previous solutions have attempted to tackle this problem. What, you, what we're seeing here, that I've just purchased a protection on this spell, and the liquidity is on QuickSwap. It could even be on different access, on different chains. This means that the protection that I took now, it's fully decoupled from the liquidity it protects. This is a very counterintuitive for DeFi because what we basically tell users is keep your liquidity exactly where it is. We don't want it. All we want to do is to protect it. And that, that's a very important point because it means that users have zero counterparty risk for the liquidity. They don't need to stake it in a different protocol. It stays exactly where it is. It can even be staked in a different protocol. Uh, it can be uh, earning extra yield. We will detect it and protect it. So what we see here that I, I just uh, successfully uh, uh, bought the protection on my liquidity that is on quick stop. You can see that now it's uh, the protection is active for a period of 30 days. And we saw that I paid the premium. So what will happen is any permanent loss that I will have on this spell uh, will be covered. And about that, how does it work? So what, what actually do I have here? What I actually got and the platform is showing me is an NFT. The NFT is in essence uh, my insurance policy on the pill. So when this period ends, the 30 days, the owner of the NFT, which is uh, my, my account, would automatically get a payout in the form of USDC straight to the wallet address. Yeah, this is really fascinating. So essentially, like this is insurance for yield farming. It's for yield farming, also so for providing liquidity. So just to give a bit of context on on uh, what impermanent loss is and and uh, why uh, and how it works. So users provide liquidity and uh, to DEXs. For example, they provide Matic and ETH. Now. They, uh, what users get that will provide liquidity, they get fees from every swap in the DEX. Besides this, they can even stake their LP token and get extra yield. But uh, by itself, they, they uh, put the liquidity and receive fees from every swap. Uh, the risk that, that this entails is impermanent loss. So uh, the way it works is 
if the two assets that you provide liquidity for, in this case, we're talking about Matic and ETH, right? If they are not correlated, so let's say uh, Matic would go up and AMM, the automatic market maker of the pool, it would basically be selling the other token. So you would be uh, profiting less than you would if they weren't in the, in the pool. On the other scenario, if one of the tokens would go down while the other won't, what would happen that you would be left for, with more of the token that went down. So you would suffer uh, uh, more losses. Uh, that's the problem of impermanent loss. So uh, you can even see here in this column, the, the impact, the historical impermanent loss that, were, that happened for each pair uh, in the last uh, 18 months. So you can see this problem is uh, very severe. And as we all know, uh, DeFi is built on DEXs, uh, all of the liquidity we're talking about. Uh, now, after all the, the decrease in the crypto market, there are $23 billion on DEXs. So uh, this is a very big problem for all of the liquidity providers. And this would give a peace of mind. So if you are worried of impermanent loss and you provide liquidity to a certain pair, uh, this allows you to take the protection and you will be covered for this. So any impermanent loss you would have, you would receive it, receive it automatically to your wallet in USDC. Okay, that makes lots of sense. This is um, pretty exciting. Uh, yeah, and uh, maybe to explain a little bit of uh, what else we're seeing. So we're seeing the CVI graph here to the right. And uh, to explain a, bit, a little bit about it, so it ranges between uh, uh, 0 and 200. Effectively, it's uh, 50 to 200. You see it's now at, in 1991. And uh, just to give some uh, uh, brief info about it, uh, levels of around uh, uh, up to around 90 uh, indicate a relatively low uh, volatility environment, expectations. And above 90, it means uh, higher expectations of volatility. So this also allows us to uh, uh, quantify the premiums for the impermanent loss that you see here. So if I would go to, for example, uh, USDT and ETH, I can select uh, an amount that I want to protect. So we can see, for example, the premium here is 0.57%, and that would cover any impermanent loss uh, on this pair. So, um, you were saying you just la launched this recently. Um, how much adoption, how much traction have you guys seen so far? Are there, do you have any like statistics surrounding that? Uh, yeah, so let's see. Uh, so we have here that this is sense, I think the beta launch where the, uh, we, before the launch and until now we had the, uh, uh, 1.4 million accumulated historical TVP. TVP is the total value protected. And right now we're protecting $1.1 million. Uh, so it's doing uh, very well. And uh, we do see it uh, expanding uh, considerably further. And important thing to, to remember that it can protect uh, liquidity from different chains. So uh, if you are to have, for example, liquidity on Binance Smart Chain, on Ethereum, on Phantom, on uh, Moonbeam, any EVM compatible chain, we can protect you. And of course, more and more pairs will be will be added over time. All right, something I do want to mention, guys, if you have any questions for Yanni, make sure to drop them in the voice chat text channel, like two channels up from this one. Or there's also Discord recently added uh text channels to the voice channel so you can drop them in there as well and then um something i want to touch on is like the risks associated with this like so i guess like obviously like as a protocol you guys have to um generate revenue you can't just be like dishing out um tons of money you know you just be at like a massive net loss like is there any uh I don't know, do you want to like talk about that a bit, like how the protocol generates revenue and like uh, any risks that potential risk for the protocol? 
like your operational risks? Yeah, sure. So in terms of branded revenue, there are uh, quite a few. The first of which is live, that there is uh, a protocol fee of 0.05% of the protected liquidity. And uh, more, uh, more will come in that regard. And that's also a very good question about the liquidity side. So what we see here, this is the buyer side, right? That you have uh, protection buyers, they come to the platform, they can even come to a DEX and uh, get protection through the DEX uh, integration with uh, our platform. And the other side, you have liquidity providers that, that uh, essentially uh, put the liquidity in the form of USDC in a vault. They cover the risk. So uh, they are, uh, they are, there's basically a hedging mechanism that protects them. Uh, and that mechanism has two parts. First is risk management, that the more there is a utilization uh, of the pool, more uh, protection buyers, the premiums would go up and up. Um, and the other thing is the hedging. So as I've mentioned, the, the CVI is a very good hedge uh, for impairment loss. So the protocol will basically be hedging itself, hedging the liquidity providers uh, using the, the CVI. And that would offset the risk. And one more important thing here that uh, impermanent loss is a, is a very big problem. And what we've done to solve it is also to have a fine-tuned balance. So let's say the, the, uh, the vault would cover any possible uh, scenario. That would uh, require an infinite amount of funds in the vault, right? So what we, we are doing is that we protect 99.6% of possible uh, historical cases. And what does that, that allows us is to cover uh, any realistic scenario, but still have a limit uh, to the IL that can, uh, we protect. So currently, that means that we protect from downward movements of up to 60% in one month. So if we're talking about, for example, uh, Ethereum USDC uh, in a period of 30 days, we would protect up to a movement of 60% downward, and that would cover any possible historical scenario, including uh, more, more, much more than cover any scenario, including the recent uh, downward movements in the market. And on the upside, we protect up to 130% uh, movement in 30 days. Uh, that is a key distinction that allowed us to have a, a capital efficiency for liquidity providers. And that's something that, uh, very very important in DeFi, capital efficiency. The the active uh, liquidity that liquidity providers put uh, has to be in use, right? It shouldn't be sitting there for uh, some unrealistic scenario. So uh, this fine-tuned distinction uh, allows us to protect any historical scenario, but while keeping the the liquidity side highly capital efficient. Cool. That makes a lot of sense. And I'm assuming like most of this information could be found in uh, your project documents, right? Um, and uh, so I guess another question that I have would be related to like the user risk. So essentially like the way I'm understanding it is like I could have my liquidity deposited on QuickSwap. I'm not like depositing it with you guys. So there's no risk there. Like I, so it, is there any like really risk for the users doing this because it seems like all they're doing is like purchasing some type of uh insurance package right so there's no like real risk to users like this is just like purchasing extra protection for users essentially yeah exactly and that, that's also a, a key point and uh even though that this is such a big problem in DeFi, it has remained unsolved and uh, previous attempts including uh, bancor uh, failed. So Benko uh, recently stopped the rail protection right uh, in the middle of the downward movement in the market. They were using uh, this, uh, their own token in order to, to protect and also liquidity providers were putting their liquidity in Benko. So this is uh, another key thing that we did. Yeah, the I complete opposite. Yeah, this is like a really unique way of approaching this and I think it's really innovative what you guys are doing. Um, so you know since we're talking about 
Bancor. Like, yeah, I'm familiar with that whole situation. And uh, I don't know. Do you personally like view Bancor then as a competitor, or like, is there anyone else that you might view as a competitor? And like, yeah, that also relates to the timing. So when we started developing this, uh, it was just when we are very excited. Uh, about this, we saw the CVI working as a very good tool that was quite uh, like uh, half a year ago, quite a long time ago. And uh, it just hap so happened that the timing right now uh, is perfect. So on one side, half a year ago, everything was doing okay. So I think people were a bit forgetting of how severe this problem is, right? And now every after what happened in the very big impairment losses in, in May, in the recent months, everyone understand and remember how uh, big of a problem in permanent loss is. And then uh, uh, right in the middle of that, uh, Bancor, uh, Bancor solution, solution stopped working. So in essence, currently we're, we're the only horse in the race right now. That's exciting. Yeah. And, you know, it's clear. Um, one of my questions is like, how do you stand out from competitors? So I feel like we've already really highlighted that a lot. Um, another question that I have would be related to token, you know, the audience typically always likes to ask when token. Uh, so you mentioned there was a token for CVI. You have, the, I believe it's called the, um, is it the crypto volatility index token? Uh, I'm wondering, do you guys have any plans on launching a token for Armadillo? Is there any need to launch one? Um, do you have any plans for a governance structure? Uh, yeah, so uh, Armadillo is an independent project. Currently, there is no token for it. What I do, what I can say is that it's very important for us to keep the everything decentralized, also with CVI, and the, there will be a, a DAO for the project, and uh, that's what I can uh, comment on right now. Okay, cool. It's nice to know that there is a DAO. Um... Well, it's in the roadmap that plans to have a DAO structure based around this. Um, so, and you also mentioned like, so you guys are currently deployed on Polygon and then if you and purch would purchase um, insurance on Polygon, it's still like protecting you if your physician's on other chains, correct? Like, so are there any plans to branch out onto other chains? Or are you guys just like pretty happy with being deployed on Polygon? like? Um, and you know what, I don't know, maybe you want to just comment on all that, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, I assume in the future we will. Currently, uh, we are on Polygon. And uh, yeah, just as you said, the solution can, from Polygon, you can connect, you can protect different chains. So I uh, feel very comfortable with Polygon. Also, we have a tight relationship. Uh, uh, like we've been early adapters of Polygon right from the very beginning with CVI. And uh, so it makes sense. Uh, probably, I assume in the future we'll uh, uh, probably branch out. But the fact that this is, uh, in essence, a cross-chain impermanent loss protection is uh, is very helpful. That we can already bring value to users on different chains, uh, even now at this stage. Yeah, definitely, and. Um... Another point I always like to touch on is partnership. So I, I could see this like potentially being partnered with like a lot of DEXs, like right on the DEX page, you know, um, accessing the Armadillo contracts right from like the front end of a, an exchange. Like, do you have, um, a, a, aside from Cody and CVI, do you have any key partnerships that you're working on that you're able to discuss? Uh uh, yes, yeah, so from what I uh, can say is that we've just been in uh, ECC in Paris. It's been amazing. And we've already been in touch with uh, several DEXs and we got some really good responses. And one thing that's very important for us is to bring value. And uh, we do see this as a solution that will have different funnels. So one is through our site, but we wouldn't want to have traffic from DEX has come to us. It can be integrated inside DEX as well as in Armadillo. So users can have different funnels to use this. And also this is another point that we mentioned, right? That it's highly capital efficient. 
very important in DeFi. So what you just said, it's uh, basically the aspect of composability. Uh, that's something that everyone in DeFi are very excited about. We're super excited about that to collaborate with different protocols, uh, not just DEXs. Uh, in ECC, we've talked with different protocols that can be integrated inside this. And this is, I think, one of the uh, things that excites us a lot, a lot that uh, to make the CVI ecosystem highly composable, you know, uh, in this space, that's super important. Uh, one of the most amazing thing about DeFi is the aspect of composability with different uh, different protocols. So that's something we we are very looking forward to. Cool, man. That's really exciting. You guys got a lot of uh, exciting developments going on here, and it's like really innovative what you're doing. And you know, I see a lot of potential for sure. And um, you know, you're bringing a lot of value to the space, definitely. So, one question I always like to ask too is like, and you already touched this on on this a little because you mentioned like how you're kind of like looked at the bank or what happened with bank or is like a key time to roll out your products um what's it been like building throughout a bear market like has it affected you guys very much uh so actually like you probably know like uh, bear markets are a great time for building and personally i've been in the space for five years and uh very very optimistic of what's happening and we've been through bear markets in the past, we are uh, like, you know, some, some projects that are, have entered in the peak, in the recent peak, there are quite a few, uh, you know, they take this, uh, what happened in the markets uh, uh, quite hard, but if you are a long time in crypto and uh, uh, in DeFi, you, you understand how it works, that, that's how this market operates. And so it's very exciting for us actually that when there's a lot of hype, there's a lot of, uh, uh, requirements from the dev team. So I work very closely with the dev team. Uh, a lot of uh, things that are happening that you need to respond to all the time. And now we've been full throttle in, in developing uh, the core infrastructure. So the solution is very robust. We also built, I think, uh, an amazing uh, uh, pipeline and we streamline the whole process. So for example, if we want right now, that, uh, wanted to uh, open production for a new pair, all the calculations, all the data, all the backtesting, it, it, it's done super fast because all of the process is streamlined and within half a day we can bring up a new pair. So in terms of uh, like development team, it's amazing that you, you can focus, work hard on building and building right and being able to have a, a very high velocity of development. So uh, when you work right, everything can then be sped up very quickly. Also, this is uh, very important for the future. So, you know, in DeFi, you always have to act fast. So when you have such such a strong foundation, you can really move very fast and react to, to different scenarios and issue new products and expand your product quite, quite quickly. Another uh, example in that regard is uh, we have a lot of... Uh, Currently in DeFi, a lot of liquidity is migrating to what's called concentrated liquidity. That's what uh, Uniswap 3 is doing. And uh, since our velocity is so high, we've been able to speed up the timeline. So we're working, we're working already on protecting liquidity for uh, Uniswap 3 type DEXs. And a lot of DEXs are going to move to that in the coming months. So, uh, and also to mention in concentrated liquidity, the problem of impermanent loss is even much more severe because liquidity providers can select ranges in which they provide liquidity and then the impermanent loss can be much higher. So the, the problem is even more severe and uh, I think our solution would, would even be more needed. So that's very exciting for us that, that we are able to have such an the ability to work so fast uh, right now. And we're already checking the data uh, for Uniswap V3. We planned for that to happen only near the beginning uh, of next year. And we're already deep into that. Uh, so, so definitely like from the development perspective, the markets are actually great. Yeah, that's great to hear. And uh, 
you know, I was definitely thinking about that, like how this could be integrated with um, the con concentrated liquidity. So it's good to hear you have that all mapped out. Um, another question that I could ask, well, before I do that, I just want to remind everyone, if you have questions for Yanni, well, we're lucky enough to have them here. Feel free to drop them in the text chat for this voice channel or drop them in the voice chat text channel, just two channels up for this one. Um, definitely urge you to ask questions while we have them here. And uh, so where do you, like, where do you want to see Armadillo in the future from now? Like, maybe you want to highlight some of the short-term or long-term goals for Armadillo? Uh, yeah, sure. So as I've mentioned, even now, after the decrease in crypto, we're talking about the market of uh, $23 billion. So uh, I, I hope to capture uh, at least 1% of that in time frame of a year or so. And uh, with concentrated liquidity, the problem is even uh, more severe. So it, it's going to be, be very interesting. We definitely want to expand. And in the future also, we have a lot of uh, ideas how to expand uh, the, the protocol. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, that if we protect, for example, Ethereum versus Ethereum versus stablecoin, that's uh, uh, something that is uh, a bit easier than protecting altcoins. So we want to check uh, how to protect, how to best protect uh, different altcoins, uh, even a bit uh, below the, the, the main ones. Uh, with proper risk management, it's something that uh, we're looking uh, at. And also, like when you buy protection, it's basically an NFT. So there are aspects that if there will be uh, demand to trade that, uh, it can be very interesting. And in that regard, and what you mentioned, we like we're now in a very good stage, I think, in DeFi in general, that everything has become very pragmatic, and there is a lot of focus for protocols to, to make a lot of uh, business sense, right? So uh, we do see this as having uh, different mechanisms that capture value for the protocol itself. And uh, besides the, the fee, there are a lot of things that, uh, a lot of different streams that will bring value into the protocol. And I think uh, at this stage, it's very clear to everyone how important that is for any protocol. This is also the, something that been important for us from day one with CVI. It has to make a lot of sense uh, for the protocol, for the protocol side and value accrual for the, for the protocol. Yeah, definitely. That makes a lot of sense. Um, well, that basically sums up all the questions that I had for you. Um, you know, you gave such a thorough and in-depth explanation of the whole protocol and how it all works. Um, you know, the presentation was great and I definitely learned from it. So I'm just wondering then, is there anything else that you want to touch upon that we haven't already? Uh, just to mention that uh, uh, I think we're basically with CVI, we have such a great community uh, that you can... Uh, also, uh, check out the CVI uh, community uh, Telegram channel and uh, also the socials for, uh, for Armadillo as well uh, that are now uh, just launched and gaining traction. And we'd love to get uh, anyone's uh, take, any ideas that you have. And uh, we, the dev team, are respond uh, very responsive on uh, Discord, on Telegram. We would love to get your ideas, uh, feedback. Uh, check out all the socials. Uh, any ideas that you know? It, this is a very uh, like early adapter stage, so I think it's exciting for many people to join and and contribute and give feedback and shape the the future of uh, of the protocol. Definitely. So, in that case, like all I have right now in the chat is your website and your Twitter. Is there any other? places to find you that I should be dropping in the chat? Like, should I drop the, is there like a CVI or Cody discord or does Armadillo have like a telegram or discord that people could follow up with you guys? What, what are the best places to follow up? Yeah, I think the best places are uh, Twitter, the Twitter of Armadillo, Twitter of uh, CVI and uh, the discord of CVI and telegram of CVI. 
Perfect. I'm going to get all of those in the chat real quick. And, um, awesome. Well, it's been fantastic speaking to you, Yanni, and learning more about your whole suite of offerings that you got going on. It's really exciting what you guys are doing for the space. Um, and I'm a big fan of, you know, the whole just everything the cvi the insurance offering like i think it's really fascinating and i'm excited to see how everything plays out and evolves yeah thanks it's been uh, great to be here and uh, very exciting to talk about uh, everything that's going on and uh, we we're very excited about this launch and a lot of things are, are coming in the in the coming months so uh, uh, stay tuned yeah, I'm fired up that the launch went smooth and I'm fired up for everything that's around the corner and definitely going to stay tuned. I dropped all the links in the chat for everyone to stay up to date. So we got the CVI website, Twitter and Discord, and then we got the all the um, the website and the Twitter for Armadillo. So if you guys want to go try it out, see what it's all about, um, you know where to find it. And uh, thanks again, Yoni, for coming out today and sharing everything with us. Oh, thank you. It's been great. Thanks, guys. Yeah, and thanks, everybody, for coming out and listening. It's great having you all today. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. All right. Bye, everybody.